you always come away with something when you watch Atlanta. In the season finale, we learned that bread is an effective weapon in these streets. <laughs> I think from now on, when two people have a conflict and want to fight, we should let some baguettes get stale and see who's the real beast of the yeast. Wonder Bread Samurai, stand up. <laughs> Let's talk about the bread slap heard around the world and how Van lent a hand to those in need. Let's go. Take my hand, yeah, yeah. take my hand. Follow me, me. follow me, yeah, me. let's go. Let's go. To the yeah. Serves up for those riding the wave of heat that has hit the East Coast right now. It's a beautiful weekend and another opportunity for us to do a final wrap up of Atlanta season three, episode 10, Teray or Terrair, however you want to say it. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share so we can continue to expand our conversations and all that good stuff. Real life is insane. And I do appreciate you spending some time listening to me, you know, give my take on this brilliant show as you go about your day. Family. We finally got an episode where the focus is fully on Vanessa. I know we've all had a lot of questions. I yelled and hollered at the screen as she engaged in pure savagery for absolutely no reason throughout these different seasons or throughout these different episodes. We've all wondered about her random acts of rebellion and lawlessness with no real regard for consequences. I mean, it's real fun to watch, but as I've been eagerly awaiting to get some backstory on how she ended up in Europe, they finally gave it to us. Vanessa has always shown us that she's not only resourceful, but she also has a fearlessness as it relates to life explorations and such. So the name of this episode is Tourette, which is the name of a French showman and soldier that was known for his unusual appetite and eating habits. So this makes sense because this whole episode has been about Van acquiring a surprising item for public consumption. More on that very soon. So let's get into the initial observations. As I suspected and speculated on in a previous video, Vanessa has been in the midst of trying to find herself and has some insecurities around where she fits in with Earn and other people within her life. Her behavior is a reflection of a person that's searching for purpose while indulging in activities that may not always be safe or even practical. Another thing I did notice is that there's a lot of layers of commentary that they're looking to touch on in this finale. Makes sense. We've got like an examination of how people of color are often used for fetishes by the same individuals that look at them with indifference because of the skin you know, color that they happen to be in. So as we noticed, kink is a great equalizer. <laughs> they also tackle depression and how easy it is to lose yourself when you're in that dark place to the point where you become someone you no longer recognize, which we did see within the episode. And how everyone, everybody, should have a friend like Candace when they're looking for that beacon of hope. Man, Candace was everything we needed her to be. All right, let's dig deep into this episode. So we do see a very different Vanessa as the story does open up in Paris and she looks and feels and sounds exactly like a French woman. Not totally surprised by this because in a previous episode, she did mention that she went overseas as a kid several times. She just didn't have much of a memory of it. And the Helen episode, uh, in the past as well, showed us her exposure to German culture. So I say that to say it's not far-fetched that she picked up on other languages as well. So not that shocking. The van we've all known and loved, though, has been replaced by a French-speaking restaurant owner that spends her day balancing out committing kinky acts on freaky celebrities and collecting human hands that serve a special purpose and experience for the patrons at the restaurant. Yeah, she's trafficking human hands for consumption, Atlanta continues to be wild indeed. Let that breathe in for a second. But she also has got time to get on a magazine cover. So she's built a whole life out there as you know, as she's been out there in Paris. So huge amount of respect for her kind of doing her thing. So Van is going about her day to day when her friend Candace recognizes her in a meat shop. The irony is not lost on me that it was in a meat shop. Anyway, for those who are newer to Atlanta or might need a reminder, Candace was in Champagne Poppy from a previous season. In a previous season, she is very self-centered and got them into the Drake theme party. In terms of that, real funny episode. Go back and take it out. The look on Candace's face really told the true story of what she saw when she when she recognized Vanessa. She didn't recognize this version of Van, and many of us hadn't. You know, Vanessa had changed her hair, her accent, and her overall memory of the life she already had. 
Van tried to convince Candace that she wasn't who she was in terms of who she was looking for, but she, after a while, recognized and embraced Candace because clearly Candace was not buying the whole I don't know who you are approach she was trying to sell her. It was like Van was playing a part and refused to break character with the people who really know who you are, even after the director yells, cut. So after that awkward exchange, Van takes Candace and her guests back to Van's apartment, and she's staying in this, you know, beautiful French apartment, and she's staying in her French character the whole time. Side note, the two girls, they were with Candace, I don't know those actresses' names, but they're funny as hell. Both of those queens literally had me laughing out loud with their commentary throughout the episode. Very, very funny. Okay, anyway. While, while they're in the apartment with Candace, you know, while they're in the apartment in, with Van, Candace tries to look around and get an idea of what the hell is happening with her friend as we all would, right? Being nosy, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with someone we really care about. So she sees Van's full phone is full of messages from various people trying to get in touch with her, like Ern and her mother. So basically it's showing you that Van had really gone off the grid and had truly left her old life and daughter behind. And Van is oblivious to this and really continues to try to entertain her guests as is this is life normal for her. This is what it is. And Candace continues to try to, you know, get her alone to catch up with her in private. So can she so she can see what's going on with her friend. But Van continues to kind of stay in that French character and avoids any real conversations about her old life. She further distances herself from any talk about her past by taking Candace and her friends with her as she goes about doing her terrain themed work and the adventures that unfold on Vanessa's errand run. Let's see. She slapped a man with a long stale baguette that didn't have what she was looking for. Like she really bread slapped a dude in public, like real blood on the bread. It was hilarious, but also like a what the hell moment at the same time. Let's see, she visited Alexander Skargars from True Blood and most recently The Northman. Check out my review on The Northman here. Uh, to play what she calls devil games that involve drugs, nude games, and face spitting as foreplay to cause humiliation. Yeah. She also capped off her day by delivering hands, human hands, uh, to a chef at a restaurant where they serve them to their guests as a special meal. That's a full fun day, right? <laughs> So, as usual, we got plenty of what the hell moments, but the writers are very clever on how they tell these stories. I do feel that the highlighting of the fetishes was an opportunity to show the audience how people of color monetize and take advantage of society's desires to do kinky and unusual things in the dark with people of color in the same way that companies capitalize off of black trauma and by saturating the market with movies and shows that only broadcast that aspect of our experience. So the writers flipped the narrative and showed you how we manipulate and capitalize off of your in the dark kinky activities to elevate ourselves in the same way the world profits off of our pain. So we profit off the joy that comes from whatever freaky fetish that people perform. This bizarro world of Atlanta will always put, you know, Black surrealism at the forefront, and I do love that, and it's one of the things I really, really enjoy about the show, but I think that that's why Vanessa yelled out, get out, when they were in the kitchen. I think that they were kind of calling, you know, out all the different trauma movies and things that came out kind of in that same way, but using kink more so to drive it other than trauma. I thought it was brilliant, but speaking of the kitchen sink with Candace. I really enjoyed how they closed out Vanessa's portion of the story by showing you truly how a friend is supposed to treat you. Like Van was obviously in a very dark place and had lost herself on a path to purpose. You know what happens. A friend that really cares about you and your well-being will always see you for who you truly are and try to help you find your way back to your center where you can really build yourself back up. So I really loved that she had someone that saw the real her and reminded her of that her daughter needed her. And that really snapped her kind of out of that trance in terms of that she was in. So very, uh, very heavy concepts, but delivered in a funny way and, uh, you know, a lot going on. But I think it was a, a very full season finale. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do in the fall with the, uh, the rest of it. But anyway, what did you think? 
I don't know what to make in terms of the bag from the guy that shot himself in the past, whose name also was Earn. Uh, I guess that's kind of the, the spooky aspect of the show that they've been alluding to the whole time, but I'm not sure what that's all about. Let me know what you think in the comments. Open to see or talk about what you might have saw. Atlanta's back in the fall, and I'm going to be right there. My Top Gun advanced screening is going to be coming up next, but let me know what you thought about this video in the meantime. See you next week. Take care.